Hey there guys, what's going on? In today's best class setups in Warzone video, some of you may know a man by the name of Husker. He plays Call of Duty a little bit, I would say, and is current, as of recording this video, record holder for the most kills in a solo game with 37 frags, which is, you might have already recognized this as a dumb number, but that's dumb. So naturally, we're going to be using his class in an attempt to get more than, I guess, like five kills. I mean, I think my record's like 18. I think, but we're not going to do that while we're recording today because imagine like having something good that you do be on record. We're obviously not going to break his record, but the MP7 is a very popular weapon in Warzone. We've taken a look at it previously, but Husker's class is like the GOAT MP7 build with low recoil, decent range, and a high fire rate. You're pretty much unstoppable at everything but the longest ranges. This class is designed for rushing. You want to be pushing towards people all the time and being super aggressive because Warzone plays the best when everybody is being aggressive and people camping, you just you just don't put up with that. But just before we do get into Husker's MP7 class here, let's try and get this video to 23 likes. The support on the videos from you guys has continued to be fantastic recently. So a big thank you to everyone for liking, subscribing, and commenting on all of the the videos so make sure you do subscribe with those notifications turned on so you don't miss any more of the upcoming videos apparently we hit 1500 subscribers overnight which is pretty wild so i guess 1600 is next Anyway, let's talk about Husker's MP7 class here. So for you lads who are just after the attachments for Husker's MP7 class here, I'll drop it right at the start of the video. So if you're not interested in hearing a more in-depth explanation of the attachments, we do have the Monolithic Suppressor, the FSS Recon Barrel, the TAC Laser, the Merc Foregrip, and of course the 60 round mags. This combination of attachments really does set us up to do some serious work in Warzone. We do have a great combination of damage, effectiveness at range, mobility, and accuracy. You're able to shred people at medium range, which is where this gun does shine. You'll definitely have to be quite aggressive with this class setup, though without a scope or anything for longer ranges. You'll definitely need to get closer to your enemies than you're probably used to, but playing aggressively in Warzone is super fun, and it can be very, very effective. Like, you don't see the best players in the world just sort of camping in a room waiting for people to come to them. Plus, this setup is super effective in plunder as well, just in case some of you do like plunder, because it is actually very, very fun. You basically just shred people's armor super quickly that they don't have much of a chance to react. If you are dropping out of the video at this stage, I do appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you in the next one. But for the rest of you, we're going to go over our perks, grenades, and attachment choices in more detail like we always do. So we'll start here with our sidearm here, because there is only really one choice at the moment. The Akimbo Renettis are the new favorite of players everywhere. You just shred people up close, and it is pretty wild. Wild. We do of course have it set up like this with the MK3 burst mod, the 1 milliwatt laser, the lightweight trigger, the 27 round mags, and of course the akimbo perk. This is basically the most busted secondary in the game until they do nerf it, which I'm guessing will probably happen after it does leave the current battle pass, so I'm guessing around season 4. I can't really see Infinity Ward nerfing current reward content just because it'd make people less keen on the current battle pass. In the perk 1 slot, we're actually running something a little bit different than usual, so in the perk 1 slot we do have EOD here. Like, Dying to explosives in Warzone is actually super frustrating. Plus, RPGs are still super strong in Warzone. They are planning on nerfing them sometime soon, but they did say that that was coming with the snake shot nerf, so I guess we'll see when that happens. However, if you are feeling a little bit nervous about thermal sights, which is understandable, they are still fairly prevalent in the game, but definitely less so than they were at the start. You can still, of course, run cold-blooded just to keep you off of those thermal sites, making it a little bit easier to move around. The choice is, of course, yours here, though, so I'm typically going with EOD. In the perk 2 slot, of course, normally we would run Ghost here, but this is a pretty big slot for this class. We've given up caring about UAVs and heartbeat sensors in the mid-game and to the early game as well. We're now rocking restocked because being able to chuck multiple of our lethal and tactical options is actually really, really strong, especially if we're just sprinting around being super aggressive. We just get a new lethal and tactical every Every 50 seconds in Warzone, which is again super, super strong. This really does make it very easy to push people when you know they're not going to be able to shoot back at you. Of course, as we move further into the game, coming into the late game, sort of mid to late game, that kind of area, you'll still want a ghost class available to choose from at the loadout drop. Restock does lose its value when you use your last lethal or tactical, and the game isn't likely to last another 50 seconds. So, hell is having a class with ghost it handy it can make you very, very powerful in the late game, and you just switch out your weapons as you come closer to the end of the game. So, restock or ghost are very, very good options here, but we're going with restock just to get new grenades basically every 50 seconds. Perk 3 is pretty much the same as usual. We can get away with running tracker for the footsteps, we can get away with running shrapnel, and of course, amped is a very good option too. Also, tune up is kind of good if you are running in squads just to get that reduced revive time but again you've got good options here like 
Shrapnel is good for getting that extra lethal grenade. Just chuck it over a wall. It's really, really strong, and that's what we've chosen here. Track is good for being able to see enemy footprints. They run into a building, and you can see where they've gone. Amped is good for switching those weapons very quickly if you are in a close quarter situation. Pulling out those Renetti pistols is very, very strong. And of course, tune up, like I said. We are, of course, going with shrapnel because chucking an extra piece of lethal equipment at someone, just deleting basically all their armor and maybe a little bit of their health too, is super, super strong in this game. Speaking of our lethal option, of course, we're going with the Semtex here. C4 is also a very good option, but with the sticky grenade that does deal decent damage, it's a fantastic tool for being able to push enemies. These typically do cause panic when people see them thrown, making them easy targets to be sprayed down and pushed. Plus, with restock, we do get another one of these every 50 seconds, which does let us take on more fights more often. Double plus, with Shrapnel, as I already said, as our chosen third perk, we do get even more Semtex grenade throwing action. And basically, we can deal so much damage to people before we even have a chance to shoot them. It makes really easy kills sometimes. Plus, it's a very easy finish if you do down someone and then just stick them with the Semtex. Like, you just throw it and then you forget that they exist. And of course, again, something a little bit different in the tactical slot. Normally, we would run with the heartbeat sensor. But of course, here we're going with the stun grenade. Basically, tagging someone with one of these means you're very likely to get the kill on them. Removing control from someone's character is very, very strong. Plus, Tack Mask still isn't a very common perk in Warzone yet, so if you do hit someone with one of these, you're pretty much guaranteed the kill. Alright, so now we'll go over our details with our attachments. Our first attachment, as I said on the MP7, is the Monolithic Suppressor. With this, we do get sound suppression and damage range. We do, of course, lose a little bit of aim down sight speed and aim walking steadiness, but we make up for that with other attachments. The sound suppression makes it a little bit more difficult for enemies to track us down when we are shooting, and I don't believe we show up on the minimap when we're firing a suppressed weapon, I think. Don't quote me on that. And the extended damage range is super strong for allowing us to take on those really common mid-range fights. This is a fantastic option for pretty much every weapon in Warzone, and I recommend that you do take it where possible. Typically, the Monolithic Suppressor is about a 7-15% to range increase depending on the weapon, so it's definitely worth taking. With the high fire rate, you combine that with the better than expected range, and you've got a deadly weapon for sure. So in the muzzle slot, we've got the Monolithic Suppressor, and that's the first attachment Husker uses on this MP7 class here. Next, in the barrel slot, we do, of course, have the Recon Barrel. With this, we do get a boost to our damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control, while reducing our aim down side speed and movement speed. In Warzone, we basically want as much damage range as possible while not completely sacrificing our mobility, which is not a concern with this particular attachment on the MP7. You'll be hitting those shots at 50 plus meters sometimes. That's fairly common range for most gunfights between about 30 and 50 meters. So getting that extra damage range at our maximum range is really important. We're still able to be really mobile with this particular barrel attached because the movement drop isn't super severe and we are using an SMG. This attachment does boost our killing power in a significant way, so it's definitely one of the most important attachments for this MP7 class. Every weapon in Warzone would always like to shoot a little further, a little faster, and be more accurate, and that's why Husker would choose this as his barrel of choice in the MP7 class that we've chosen here. Next, we've got the laser option here. We've chosen the TAC laser. I'm liking the TAC laser more and more in Warzone recently. We do get a huge boost to our aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and of course, aim walking steadiness. This is a fantastic option for a number of reasons. We are very snappy on the aim down sight speed with this. We don't actually have any other ADS attachments, so this is a pretty important one to pick up here. Secondly, our weapon doesn't sway anywhere near as much with this attached, and in combination with our recoil controlling attachments, we can be super accurate at those medium range fights. I know you're wondering about the laser though, like the visible laser. I've talked previously about not wanting to give away information. I just feel like this is less relevant in Warzone as there's a lot more going on for people to pay attention to. I'm not going to lie, I don't think I remember ever seeing anyone else's laser in Warzone. Plus, a lot of the fights do occur outside, making the visible laser kind of a non-factor. So basically, free bonuses here that make us aim down sight faster. Makes sense why Husker would put this on his MP7 class. Next, in the underbarrel slot, we do have the Merc 4 group. With this, we do get recoil control and hip fire accuracy. These stats do help with the vertical recoil of the MP7. It does make us very, very accurate. Similar to the recoil control bonuses that we do get from our barrel, this does help us fight at those longer ranges, which will help us pick off targets that are slightly further away. Plus, we do get a nice boost to our hip fire accuracy, which adds to our aggressive playstyle by giving us the option to not have to aim down sight in close quarters, which is sometimes enough to win a gunfight. But if you're really unlucky like me, letting the game decide who wins the fight based on hip firing is a little bit risky, but you can only get away with this sometimes at close range or while the enemy is stunned. This does help us stay on target though, so again, in the underbarrel slot, we've got the Merc foregrip, and that's the third attachment for Husker's MP7 class here. 
And lastly, in the ammo slot, we've got a very simple attachment, the 60 round mags. With this, we obviously get more bullets to fire. Again, it can take 10 plus bullets to kill people sometimes, and depending on the range. So we definitely do need extra bullets when we are fighting in squads and sometimes even in solos. It's always nice to have those extra rounds just in case you do get third party, which happens basically every single gunfight you get into in Warzone. I'm pretty convinced that people just like Enderman teleport across the map to third party people in this game. Like, it's just beautiful. This attachment answers a very simple question. Do we need more bullets? And the answer is pretty much always yes in Warzone. So we just get more bullets basically. There's isn't really anything fancy here unfortunately there's no option for improved damage or range like with other weapons but we just get more bullets to spray down range which is a very powerful option on a weapon with a rapid fire rate and that's why we've included the 60 round mags as the last attachment in husker's mp7 class setup here again here is the full class setup with all of these attachments that husker has got on his mp7 class setup these combined do help make the MP7 one of the better weapons in Warzone at the moment. With this, we do get an excellent combination of damage, effectiveness at range, good mobility from the SMG class, and fast handling from the TAC laser. We're able to spray at people for a long time with the 60 round mags, and in a single clip, you can definitely take down squads if you are placing those shots. Plus, with our stun and push technique, we're able to kill people who can't really even fight back sometimes, they just can't turn around, which is pretty strong sometimes. While I've never gotten 37 kills in a solo game, this class is still really powerful, and I've gotten at least one dub rock in this. Maybe one day I will be actually good at Call of Duty, like, you guys still come around and ask for my opinion on Call of Duty, and I don't know why. <laughs> But I do appreciate it, of course, and if you did enjoy this one, make sure you do leave a like and let me know by subscribing if you are new around here, of course, so you don't miss out on any more of these videos. We did somehow recently hit 1,500 subscribers now, which is absolutely wild to me, so I guess we're on the train towards 1,600. So thank you very much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!